Welcome back everybody. It's been a long time and I apologize for that. I've got a lot of projects that I'm doing some research on and hopefully I'll be getting those filmed soon so I can get those up and you guys can watch them and let me know how I did. But in the meantime, we have, I have, a visitor. It's my son Bruce. Hi. Hi. What's going on? He visited from Ohio and while he's been here, we have made several trips to some of the area thrift stores Howard's Flea Market and the Oldsmar Flea Market. So we're going to do kind of a, uh, a thrift store, kind of antique store, flea market haul and let you guys see what we picked up. We've done, have we done something like this before? You um, did one last year. Um, yeah, on Instagram Live. but uh, And I think Mink and, Mink and I did one uh, not too long ago and, and people seem to enjoy it. So um he's picked up a little bit more than i have i so, uh i went overboard again probably so we're going to get him started and he can show you what he picked up and what he's planning on taking back to ohio for anybody that's a fan of the simpsons we got tough beer right here tough beer right here uh this is one of those plushy rewards that i'm pretty sure you win at universal they have their simpsons section i'm pretty sure this is one of the prizes but uh yeah, I'm not sure if those are available in the gift stores. I do know that they have several games in the Simpson area that you can try and win stuff, and I think he's right. I think that is one of the prizes. Uh, yeah, I tried that. Uh, the sledgehammer with yeah, the bell on the top. Yeah, and uh, that was that was a pretty big fail. So I just bought this for 12 bucks. So. It could happen. $12, and the people that sold that to him happened to be from the very same area grew up in the same town that I did uh, and the gentleman there was from Pittsburgh which you all know that we were just in not too long ago so that was kind of amazing now that actually says Universal Studios on it somewhere doesn't it sure does basically parallel right to the back uh, we got it right here Universal Studios so and if I remember right, that was a $12 purchase? That was a $12 purchase. So. I'm sure, based on my skill and probably your skill, that we probably would have spent more than $12 trying to win one. Um, well, I was up to, I think they charged 7 bucks for three attempts. Hmm. Something like that. Maybe it was 5 I don't know. But I wouldn't have won in seven and a half swings. That hmm. would not have happened. This is good for the upcoming month of Halloween, or October, I should say, for Halloween. Uh, we've got this, it's like a stagecoach, but it's got skeletons uh, as uh, the passengers in it. It's just some uh, crazy Halloween decoration that I just tilt it down a little bit, get the glare off of it. I don't know if that's helping or not. Um, you're right, it is a stagecoach with some skeleton occupants. Oh, I just got bit by the thief. <laughs> it's the Haunted Stagecoach Table Accent. Uh, this was originally sold by Michaels. It was $26.99 at Michaels. Uh, do you remember how much you paid for it? $15. $15. This was one of those weird things I just happened to see at the antique mall it was at. And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I went through the whole thing, and I'm like, you know what, if I don't buy this, I'm, I'm going to regret it, and I'm going to kick myself, because it's just so cool. I think it would have been a little neater if the uh, horses were actually skeletons yeah. also. But that, it, that is good news, though, that they are alive. Yes. That is that is encouraging, though, so that is good, but uh, yeah, I, I had to get it. $15, why not? As far as NASCAR goes in today's day and age, I'm not really a fan anymore, but I I was born in 91, so I grew up with the 90s, and I really wasn't a fan until the 2000s, and now I look back on the 90s, and I think that was probably the best time for NASCAR for me personally, just because of all the drivers that were there, uh, and just the, the sport evolving into what it became in the 2000s and uh i'm a sucker for uh 90s uh racing memorabilia so you know i picked up a bunch of these uh die cast cars there's mark martin who's 
car I always loved, and Mark Martin's great, so I always got him. Ricky Rudd and the Tide Ride, I'm a sucker for that car too, so I always, if I find it, especially when it's like cheap, I grab it, because it's just so cool to me. Um, I don't know how many of you are in a NASCAR, so if this bores you, I, I apologize. It's his fault. It is my fault. Um, this one was cool, because number one, my number, my favorite number is basically 29, and uh, as you can see from the shirt, I like professional wrestling, so not only do I collect... That is a shirt. It is a shirt. Uh, not only do I collect NASCAR stuff, but the fact that this is World Championship Wrestling, uh, I thought it was really cool, and you know, it's, it's obscure as far as my actual WCW collection, but what the heck. And I got it for 10, so it's like, okay, that's a no-brainer. Uh, for all you baseball fans, I actually got a couple cool little pieces here. Uh, Frank Thomas, the big hurt. And Andres Galarraga, the big cat. Uh, some 90s era headliners. I'm... I've got maybe five or six of these at home that I've just collected over the years and found these for dirt cheap, so why not? Headliners look a lot like bobbleheads, but they their heads don't bobble. No, they are basically figurines, but um, they are XL size, so um, they are nice display pieces. They're really cool. Me personally, I don't open them. That's just the way I am with it, but it's awesome to have these, so... That was great. I think this was five. I think this was three. And I apologize if there's glare. I'm not wearing my glare. I can't see it. Yeah, leave comments down below if you're a collector of things and if you hang on to the boxes or if you just get the piece for what it is and display it and get rid of the box. I personally used to save boxes. I literally had giant boxes filled with boxes uh, from a lot of the die cast cars from NASCAR. Oh, and a ton of it just got to the point where it was taking up way too much room and I had boxes of very flammable cardboard uh, in the garage which is where I stored the empty boxes and it just got to the point where I wanted the space more than I wanted the boxes and I made the boxes go away. I made the boxes go away. So some people say smart move, uh, way to clean and, and get rid of the clutter and other people say oh that was really bad you shouldn't have done that. Yeah you uh the value yeah I mean it's it's weird you watch like American Pickers sometimes and it's like well uh, there's there's a toy from the 50s but the box if you had the box it's worth more than the actual toy itself yeah some of them are yeah and it's it's crazy and it's 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 something just so simple like you open something and I don't need this it. it's trash throwing it out but I think people have wised up over the years about you can that. Yeah, speaking of eBay you can even search empty boxes, empty toy boxes, or, and sometimes you come across something, well, it will say, just the box, toy not included, not battery not included, the toy, you, so you, you they, people think, well, I'm buying a, a toy in a box, and actually all they're buying is the box the toy came in, so you gotta watch out for that sometimes, but, uh, you, do a search and you'll see there's a lot of empty boxes for sale. Got a trading card set here. For, uh, we're still on NASCAR again. I'm sorry if this bores you. Um, I, I have a whole bunch of weird stuff or obscure stuff or different stuff that I collect. This all is basically my realm of what I enjoy and what I collect. But this is from the year I was born. I guess it's a whole set of NASCAR drivers and uh, 240 card set. And I guess it's all right here. Factory sealed, five bucks. Can't really beat that, right? No, you can't. That was an excellent price. When he was born, I went out and bought a Topps complete set. I forget how many cards there were in that set. 91 wasn't a popular Topps set. It was their anniversary year. 792? That could be. Uh, but I tried to get him all of the baseball card sets from the year he was born and then filled on the Topps and Topps only because there was Topps, Donruss, Fleer, Leaf, I, I focused on tops. Score. I think otherwise you nailed all of them. Mm -hmm. Upper deck. Upper deck, yeah. Yeah. Bill Elliott, 90s era uh, McDonald's cars. One is a is actually called the Thunderbat for Batman Forever, which came out, I believe, in 95. Really, really cool car. Um, I dig this one a lot. 
Um, just, I never really liked Bill Elliott, but I loved his McDonald's paint schemes. I loved the fact he drove a Thunderbird because those things are so cool. Um, I had to get that. And then this is basically the end of his era as uh, the driver for McDonald's. So I, just, I always like that paint scheme too, the red and yellow. Um, just, awesome Bill. Uh, from Dawsonville. That's right. That's right. It was uh, won the most popular driver award for how many years? It was like a decade or something. It was pretty much a decade then. I think Hardenhart may have just dominated it, and then June. I don't know. I'm not sure, but he was he was the fan favorite for a long time. He was. Uh, now his son is racing. Yeah, I like Chase, Chase Elliott. Elliott. Chase Elliott's great. Mm -hmm. I, I'm saving that for last. That's a story in and of itself. Um, I'm going to jump in here real quick with a couple things that I've picked up. Uh, one of them is a, cool. a calculator. It's a mechanical calculator. Uh, I forget the name of this. You you use the, the stylus. These were actually, I think, started being produced in the early 1920s, and they were made all the way up until the early 80s. And you use the stylus and you push uh, these tin or sheet metal uh, columns up and down with uh, based on the numbers here. And you can do addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Uh, you kind of have to figure out what, what you need to do with as far as it's got two colors, red and white. Uh, there's videos on, on how to work these. And then when you have a bunch of numbers and you're, you're done with that to clear them all out. You don't have to do each one individually. You just pick on this, this bar, push up, and it makes everything back to zero. So it, it kind of intrigued me because I remember these when I was much younger. That was a long time ago. And I asked the gentleman how much he wanted for that. I think it's an item that he had just received. He was getting ready to put it out on the shelf. And for whatever reason, he looked at me and he goes, take it. Zero. So that was um, that was unexpected and, and very nice of him. So it's always nice when you get something that, that you find and, and they give you a good price on it, or in this yeah. case it was free. So okay. it was cool. I think it was called the Wonder Brain or something like that. Uh, I apologize for not knowing, but they've been around for a long time. Maybe some of you guys have them. Comment down below. So this is the 91 top set aforementioned, although there is a twist. These are mini cards. They're little guys. So it is the entire 1991 Topps baseball card set, but they're five times the size of a normal baseball card. So yeah, you see this small box here, there's 792 cards in it. Whole set right there. Boom. Right Factory there. sealed. No. Factory sealed. Factory sealed. Collectors will know why that's a big deal. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't think I'm opening it. And Topps 1992, uh, the traded set, so... This basically means guys that were playing in 1992 that got traded to another team or moved to another team in between the season. They made a set for those guys with their new teams. So that is reflected right here in that. And the, the trading deadline is, is usually July 31st. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. So you still have the season from August through October. And then there's some trades that go on before then. Uh, and a couple afterwards, I think, if they, they know how to work the rules and stuff. But it's, it's basically, you have, if you get released, you have to clear waivers. And somehow you have to absorb the salary of that player. Yeah, there's a lot involved in it. But um, Tops jumped in the market with updated sets, which is what that is. And uh, they, they're pretty popular. Uh, I'd say Tops is definitely number one in baseball baseball cards for sure and I think it's been that way for a long time uh, 1990 score factory sealed entire set almost 800 cards here sorry <laughs> it didn't say specifics on that now how much was the tops miniature set eight bucks eight dollars eight dollars 1991 score factory sealed set year I was born uh, which I think you have that set it's just not factory sealed I'm not opening this. Ten dollar NFL football cards from the year I was born. This is basically the same concept, except with these football cards. This is a football set, Fleer. This is uh, this is score. Score. This is score too. And then 
Wouldn't you know it, I found an unopened factory sealed box of 36 packs of, you guessed it, 1991 score football. Wow. And this bad boy I've needed for a while. Uh, and a lefty driver for my golf bag. It says Acuity. I've never heard of them, but the fact that this thing is a left-handed club and the club head is this big, I needed this really bad. This was 18 bucks. This was actually here last year when I was here at the store we were at, but I don't think anybody's left-handed apparently in Florida playing golf, so it's mine now. So that's a really good item. I needed that. And while he was here, we did take advantage of going to the Congo River Golf Facility, and we played 18 holes. Bruce ended up winning uh, between Bruce and Mindy and I. So I bought the alligator at the golf course and I picked up a, an ambidextrous putter at the thrift store and I made a trophy for him since he won so he can hang on to that until the next time and he can see if he can hang on to the trophy or if somebody's going to get it away from him. Come at me bro. That's right. I'm going to jump in here with a couple other items that I picked up. It's a Soldier's Manual of Common Tasks, Skill Level 1, 1987. And what I enjoy about these books is that there's drawings on the back and notes in them, and there's notes on some of the pages from the guys that were in the service that, that had to learn this stuff. So I got this one for $3, and again, it's dated October of 87, but I think the first printing was, was much earlier than that, uh, but there's updates. A lot of notes about different grenades and things of that nature, where they were stationed and what barracks and things like that, dates, a lot of dates through this, so I found this was, was very interesting. And then I think this one is originally printed in 69, 1969, but there's updates with, I think, the 70s, up to the late 70s. Oh, they're so cool. It's the Engineer Field Data Book, FM 534. Um, FM is Field Manual, and I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of flip through that and hope you can see some of the stuff that's outlined in here and, and pictures. I found that to be very interesting. I believe all of these books that I'm, I'm about to show you, I paid $3 each for. And thankfully it's declassified information. Yes, this one is from the War Department, Basic Field Manual, the Browning Automatic Rifle, 30 caliber, M1918 without bipod. And it's FM or Field Manual 23-20. And this was printed in 1940. Some things in it that are underlined and some other notes and it breaks down the, the browning and... That's a cool detail. Somebody actually took the time to have specifics down in that book. Uh, different positions for different terrains and things for proper sight alignments and things like that. It's the Machine Gunner's Handbook, the Infantry Journal. 50 caliber machine gun and the 81 millimeter mortar and other material useful to the soldier. Dated 1995 by one of the owners. This is a third edition. I'm trying to find a printing date on it, which I don't see. 1942, I found it. Third edition in 42. And this one is also kind of nice because machine guns, uh, from my understanding, you have to have some type of a special stamp or some kind of designation that allows you to own one of these. They're hard to find and if you find one they're very expensive. And then you have to pay a, I think a yearly um, tag fee for something like this. So to find this it was pretty cool. I, I thought it was. Uh, and again three dollars. Yeah, it's really cool because it's 1942. That's right smack dab in the midst of World War II especially after we got into it. So. Now, Mindy and I have traveled to Philadelphia and we've seen the Independence Hall. So I found this, I think this was $5. This was at a, uh, a thrift store. One of the things I thought it was kind of funny, I, I liked the plate, I liked that we were there and we actually saw it, but on the back it's it's got a, a label. 
identifying it as a Liberty Blue original copper engravings of historic colonial scenes printed on Staffordshire Ironstone. It's fairly new because it says detergent and dishwasher safe. Uh, Independence Hall. But the thing that really caught my eye, right by my, my finger here, it's made in England. So I thought that was kind of funny that Independence Hall on a plate was made in England. Hey, you seem to catch on to the real ironic funny stuff pretty quick. Yeah. Walt Disney, the Jungle Book 40th Anniversary Edition, Platinum Edition, on DVD. It's a uh, Region 1. Uh, that was $2.18. That was a steal. I think I have this in a, uh, in a set. But this was the obviously the individual packaging by Warner Brothers. It's uh, Scooby-Doo meets Batman. And when I grew up, the world stopped when Batman came on. So this is the the closest to the characters that um, Batman from when Adam West and Burt Ward were playing Batman and Robin and some of the villains. I know they've changed quite a bit recently. Um, uh, it's not quite that they've changed necessarily. It's that there's more of them now. And mm -hmm. It's You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx, TV favorites. Um, he did a TV show from the early 50s through 1961, which is when I was born. So when I showed up, Groucho said, nope, that's it, I'm done. So he, he stopped doing it. But there was a lot of very famous people that came on the show. There was a secret word that if somebody said the secret word, they got a cash bonus or something. Ah, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Ooh, yeah. Ah. It was a dollar something. And then for $5 also for the license plate collection, I really like this one with the chickadee and the pine tree with the cone. I picked up a State of Maine license plate. And this was originally $7.50, and they told me I could buy it for 5 If you notice this guy back here, he came from the Goodwill store. He is $12.99. Um, he does light up, his eyes light up, and he squawks just like a crow. But he's kind of loud. And it's kind of late, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. And I think the cats get upset when I do it because uh, they're not used to it. <laughs> and they're both right here. Yeah. So we're not gonna do that. But he's he's got some fuzzy. Uh, he's got like a boa that he's wearing. Uh, highly fashionable. And then the other one, and this was six ninety nine, is the the owl skeleton, and he does light up. There you go. Oh yeah, that's good. There it is. You can see him now. So six ninety nine and twelve ninety nine. This guy talks or squawks, and this guy he's, his eyes light up. So those were kind of fun. Uh, cheap price. That's all right. That's all right. Okay. I, if any of you saw the Instagram live last year, if you kind of follow along with my Instagram or you know everything going on, you. What is your name on Instagram? Who should they look for? It is bmick29, that is B-M-I-K-29. 29? Two nine. That will be it. Like I said, that's that's my number. That's pretty much always been my number, and I'm 29 now, age-wise, so hopefully this is my year. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. We'll but, see. Um, I am an adopted Rays fan now because of him. And they're doing good. I don't know. I, that's a that's a happy byproduct. But uh, no, I've since become a fan of all the Tampa Bay teams. So the the Lightning, the Rays, the Buccaneers. Um, I've become quite a fan of all all those teams now. Um, so naturally, when you're in the Tampa area, you're going to find a lot of Tampa Bay Rays merchandise. So. Um, I have so many bobbleheads, uh, baseball-wise, that I couldn't even tell you. A hundred? Yeah, probably close to a hundred. A hundred at this Easy. And now, mind you, the majority are um, the Indians, because I'm from Cleveland, and that's just the way it is. Uh, Chris Archer, right here, uh, is a guy I'm not really fond of, but there was an awesome reason I did buy this. Number one, it was in great shape. But number two, it's actually got a K counter on it, which is something I've never seen out of a bobblehead. So K, if you keep track for keeping score in baseball, K is for strikeout. Strikeout. So 
There's a cake counter on this bobblehead. I don't really know if you can see it again. I have no vision at all, so I apologize if there's glare. This looks bad. I don't know, but right here there's 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 three um, you know slots that you can move up and down. Uh, zero kind of a dial. Yeah, dials uh, zero through nine. So did you did you put the number in here, or is it just no? I've never seen that on a bobblehead before, so anytime I guess Chris Archer gets a strikeout, you can put it one on a dial and move it up. I just thought that was really cool. And when they Archer originally came up with the Cleveland Indians, and they Which... traded him to Tampa, who then traded him to Pittsburgh, and it was probably one of the best trades that Tampa has ever made. I... I, I... <laughs> the very second that trade went down, I questioned every single executive in the Pirates office as to why that was a good trade to you. It wasn't. I called that, didn't I not? Yeah, you did, right this, away. The same day, I said, why did they make that trade? The Rays just won this for the century. Um, I won't take all of these out. Um, Jake Odorizzi... Uh, he was a pitcher for the Rays. He's now with the Minnesota Twins. He's probably one of the one of the better two starters in in baseball. I, I'm pretty sure he's their second starter behind Barrios, who's basically their ace. Um, well, I guess that depends on how you look at it. My Kenta Maeda is having a heck of a year. Um, but I have no idea. I'm and just go by what you say. So I, I don't know what their rotation's looking like, but Maeda is having uh, a career year, and um, Odorizzi, Barrios, those guys are, are great. Um, this one's really cool. Um, Fred McGriff, Crime Dog, and Tino Martinez, two of the better players of the 1990s. There's like a double bobblehead, so if you were to open this up, uh, there's uh, Fred McGriff here, Tino Martinez there. Really cool bobblehead. That was 10 bucks. Stole that for 10 bucks. So you could say that's a double header. It's a double header. Double bobbleheader. Sure is. This, this actually isn't a bobblehead per se. This is a figurine. So uh, Troy Percival, Great, great closer for a long time in the 90s, uh, most famously with the Anaheim, so California slash Anaheim Angels. Um, I think he bounced around a couple more teams, or maybe the Rays were the last one, I don't know, but this is the end of his career, more or less. Uh, Troy Percival figurine. Uh, like I said, I don't really get figurines, but the fact that it's him, and it was $6, I'm taking it. Wade Boggs, the Hall of Famer, famously with the Yankees and Red Sox primarily. Mm -hmm. uh, the end of his career, he is actually on the inaugural Devil Rays team, I believe. Well, back when they were called the Devil Rays, now they're just the Tampa the Rays. Bay Rays. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure he was on that inaugural team in '98. But this uh, this is to commemorate his 3,000th career hit in baseball, which pretty much automatically locks you into uh, the Hall of Fame. Came against the Cleveland Indians. That was a home run. Mm -hmm. I want to say he was the first ever to hit his 3,000th hit as a homer. Could be. It is a Ryan Stanek bottle opener. So it's pretty much his his head on an actual bottle opener. Um, and I think it might have a button you can push and it has the talks, I think. I think it does. Yeah. I, I think it does, but I, I looked at it and I'm like, I gotta have this. So, last year at Halloween we had uh, quite a bit of fun uh, at the house here, uh, passing out candy and, and enjoying Halloween. And I thought one of the things I was missing was a fog machine. And we were in Goodwill today, and I came across the standard fog machine. And I think this is something that you pick up at uh, Target or Walmart or something like that. If, if you're looking for a professional grade something, this, this is not what you're going to want. Uh, it was originally $25 whenever this was sold. Um, I found it complete for $8.98. So I figured I'd take a chance with it. Got it home, saw that there was still some fluid, which you can actually make at home, in the, the machine. 
plugged it in, waited for about five minutes, which is what they recommended, turned it on, and we had fog. Yeah, and again, if you're looking for something that's that's commercial grade or something that you're going to do production with, with videos or things like that, this probably isn't what you're going to want. Yeah. They yeah. have some that have lights that change colors and do things, and the output on those machines are much greater than what you'll get from this. But for putting it out in the front yard and, and having the, the bushes kind of emit fog, that would be kind of cool. So yeah. we're, yeah. going, we're going to give this a try, but for $8.98... I think it was it was pretty good. This probably will mean nothing to ninety nine point nine percent of the people watching this. It's just this plain shirt right here. There's nothing special about it uh, on the outside. But uh, for anybody that knows Trailer Park Boys, this is pretty much what uh, Jim Leahy wears in pretty much just about every episode. He wears a shirt just like this. So if I can ever put the ensemble together. As uh, Jim Leahy, this is this is the shirt right here. I paid like four bucks for it. Four dollars. So I have never seen that series. I've never <laughs> seen an episode, but I understand they're in what season ten? Uh, there's been twelve seasons. Season twelve. And there's been twelve seasons of that, and they've had some spinoffs, and then they made a couple seasons of uh, an animated cartoon, which is man, not very good. Not so good. I paid three dollars for this. Regular show, Mordecai Rigby, absolutely love that show. Oh yeah, that's, that was your favorite for a long time. Uh, I love this show so much. It's just who, who would have thought a cartoon with a raccoon and a blue jay could be so amazing and have so many great memories. I just I I love this show. I think this is their only alternate jersey. They might have another one, but this is this is definitely one of their alternate jerseys. Um, I haven't seen him wear this one in a while, but uh, I I think it's really cool. But the 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 thing about this one specifically is you can see there's a 39 on the front, and that belongs to a man named Kevin Kiermeyer, aka the Outlaw. The Outlaw Kevin Kiermeyer. Just fifteen. Fifteen dollars. Uh, this was worth it. Repping my city, the two one six. There's Chief Wahoo, Carlos Baerga, majestic spring training jersey, basically. Too legit, too legit, too legit to quit. <laughs> this thing is... They played that every time Carlos came up, and he was at or on the at the top of the order, or in the top. Seven dollars? Come on. Thanks to my dad, he shared his love of antique cars with me. And I was fortunate enough to find this beauty, which is a 1948 Tucker. If you know about the Tucker, let me know with comments down below. But it's a very detailed Franklin Mint model, 124 scale. It was originally made in 48. They made 51 of them. Very highly detailed. Um, love the color. I believe it was Preston Tucker who was the manufacturer of the car. I believe this was his wife's, uh, the color of his wife's favorite dress. I think that's how this color came about on the Tucker. Are those suicide doors? Yes, they are. Good eye. I didn't even see that. But very detailed. But anything from the Franklin Mint is probably going to be pretty close to top notch. The first Tucker that I ever got to see in person was that color blue. So it was kind of neat to find this model. This same dealer also had another model. My dad and I used to go to a junkyard that no longer exists, but it was one of the junkyards that had, as far as you could see, of cars from the, literally from the 30s through the 70s absolutely amazing junkyard. There was trees growing up through cars um, back when the scrap metal went up real high they went in and cleared out the whole place and started over and I don't even know if it's even still there but one of the cars that was in the junkyard was a 1958 Edsel convertible that happened to be pink and I, I took a picture of it in all its glory 
There's two things that are fascinating about this car. One is the grill in the front. They call it the horse collar grill. And the other one is the steering wheel because in the middle of the steering wheel was push buttons for your transmission. And the center stayed in one spot, but the steering wheel rotated around it. I've always been fascinated with 58 Edsels. 59 and 60 were the 58, 59, and 60 were the three years that Ford made the Edsel. It was named after Henry Ford's son, Edsel Ford. And I would sit in this car with my arm up on the, the door frame. Even though it was pink, I dreamed about someday owning one of these cars. I, I wouldn't say that would be my first color choice, but when you like a car and you don't have it, and other people do, uh, you really can't be really picky about it. I thought 60 was the really rare one. Yes. That 60, is. yeah. 60 is the rarest of the three years. But, in the same place I bought the Tucker, they happen to have a pink 1958 Edsel convertible. I, the pink looks really good on that car. It does. Yeah. Um, and we saw one last time you were here. I think we were over at Steak and Shake. Parking lot. Yeah. That's that front grill I was telling you about. I actually have one of those grills hanging in the garage. But it's it also has a lot of features and opening hood and trunk and all kinds of really neat stuff. They did a really good job on these cars. So I was very happy to, to find this. So when I display this, I am going to display that along with the picture of my dream car back when I was... Oh yeah, you were stoked about that thing. Yeah. About finding it. And then the other things I've, I've picked up are these rings. He's kind of shiny looking at you. And then I also got that guy. They can kind of look at each other. But I have quite a collection of rings. Most of them are, are skulls and various... You've always been fond of skulls. Yeah. Rightfully so. Skulls are cool, man. So that's all the stuff that I was picking up at the different shops and stores we went to. What is your... The coup de gras. That's what he said. The coup de gras item I got here Tuesday, last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And I think the next day we went to this uh, one, I would call it an antique mall. A mini, mini, mini antique, antique mall. mall. Yeah. yeah. I saw this item, I, I'm pretty, that was the most expensive item that I bought mm -hmm. in one, one single item. It was 80 bucks. Um, I saw it the next, I saw it that Wednesday and I was like, I don't think I could do this because Lord knows how much money I'm going to end up spending on everything else. And lo and behold, today, I actually did pretty well. Yeah. You did good. You had enough money. I did pretty well on this trip. I mean, I bought pretty much the world and the farm, but I uh, I did really well, I thought. But, um, yeah, I realized I could afford this still, so I went back today. We went back today. We went back today, and I ended up picking it up, and I think this is just, honestly, I think it's the highlight item. Uh, there it is. The Anaheim Mighty Ducks 90s. Pro line winter jacket. Look at that. $80 of greatness. You get the Mighty Duck logo right there. Uh, really cool NHL, I, I can't even see, Western Conference patch right there on the sleeve. Got a nice little graphic here. My favorite part's the back though. I, I don't know if I'm in the frame or not. Look at that color scheme on the back of that jacket. Yes. The Mighty Ducks. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I wanted it, and I made it happen, and I was so excited to have this. And there was a movie, I think, also in the 80s about the Mighty Ducks. Those were the 90s. 90s? Yeah, Emilio Estevez. Mm -hmm. So that is our thrifting haul. A lot of stuff there that you can see. I hope you're sports fans and, and you enjoy yeah, I hope what you, we picked up. I hope you're not completely bored by this. Yeah. <laughs> and some of the, the oddball things, like the Independence Hall plate made in England. But there you have it.
So if you would comment down below, good or bad, I always like to read the comments. Uh, check out Bruce on Instagram. Uh, check out the fabulous, adorable Mindy Minx. And with that, I will see you next time. Bye. Peace.